we create, reached out to me to see if I wanted to test their new 40 watt vision laser. I said, yeah, most definitely I will. I really liked their uh, 20 watt, had one of the best cameras out there. So what is the WeCreate Vision 40 watt? Well, it's a 40 watt laser diode. It is 455 nanometers. It has an auto lifting focus system, an HD camera, has built in air assist, has a laser bed. It's enclosed with LED lighting and exhaust. It can operate at 600 millimeters per second. It has a laser spot size of 0 0.01 by 0 0.1 millimeters and a crumb tray. Everything else is pretty much identical to the 20 watt. Eh, minus that this is now like a, like a light blue. So if you'd like to see the whole unboxing of it, you can watch my previous video, which I'll put a card above and a link down in the description. One thing that has changed is the working size because the laser module is a little bit bigger. So it's been reduced to 400 by 270 millimeters. Now these uh, machines get jostled around from shipping and everything. And what I like to do is actually calibrate the camera. We create makes it really easy to calibrate the camera. Just go to settings, calibrate camera. And you're gonna just click on start calibration. You're gonna wanna have a nice flat sheet of basswood. And you wanna try to have one at about three millimeters. Enter the millimeters below and then make sure that it is aligned as in the picture. You go ahead and hit confirm, and it's gonna start the calibration process. What you're gonna see is it's going to engrave nine pluses across the whole material. And this is what the camera is going to use to align it. And it'll go up and down to certain heights. And it really couldn't be any easier. You know, the only problem I have is that you basically could waste a nice sheet of wood. So for my first test, I went to makercase.com and I'm going to go ahead and try to make like a, a, a little box here. I went ahead and imported and I'm just using the sheet of uh, basswood that I had there for the test since it's already got some laser engravings on it. And I went with a power of 100 and a speed of 15. And unfortunately, I forgot to actually plug in the little air assist pump and this would have normally turned on automatically for any type of cuts. So you will definitely see some charring and it looks like it cut through like butter. I would hope so, it's a 40 watt module. And this is my first time doing anything with a, like a flex to it. And let's go ahead and see how well it works here. So man, it definitely curves and bends pretty easily. So let me see if uh, it can actually go around the corner. Ah, uh, which it didn't. So yeah, it, it broke pretty easily. I think that these uh, little uh, slits here definitely need to be maybe a little bit wider and it just snapped pretty fast. So um, it's only my first attempt, but you can see the charring on the back and that's only because I, again, I wasn't running any type of air assist. So let's go ahead and do another test. This time I decided to do the maker case with a box with slits in it. Again, the air assist was not plugged in, but it did seem to cut most of it but not all of it. I'll show you why in a few seconds, but for the most part, most of the other pieces did come off. And as you can see, the box came out rather nice, um, except for right there. I had to pull it apart and it delaminated a little bit, but there's a little bit of charring. Again, air assist was not plugged in, but very clean cuts. Yeah, this is three millimeter basswood. It was nice and flat when I put it in, but unfortunately it warped pretty darn quickly. So always keep it in a nice dry environment and maybe some clamps. Now let's engrave the Star Trek Enterprise. And in the preview, you can actually click on the basswood and select an engraving color that you like. They're definitely making it easier for people to use these laser engravers and to make it software. Next, I want to cut it out. So the power is at 100 and the speed is at seven millimeters per second. Now for this cut, I definitely didn't forget to plug in the air assist and it turned on automatically. And this is at real cutting speeds. It looks like that line is nice and crisp. And let's go ahead and take a look. Wow, this came out really nice. Look how nice and clear all the wording is, all the numbers, nice engraving, almost no charring around there. You could use uh, for post cleanup just a you know a, a little bit of sandpaper but look how nice this came out i mean it's so nice and legible i really like it and then look at how nice and clean this cut is 
almost zero charring. Now you do see a little bit of charring on the bottom from the racks themselves, but otherwise, look at that. Very clean cut. Now this is a little bit thicker. This is actually six millimeter and it definitely survives the climate in my garage a lot better than the three. So it is a little bit more expensive to use, but to me, it's a lot less wasteful because um, it doesn't warp as easily. Now let's go ahead and engrave this cutting board. You'll notice it is upside down and we will need what's called an interface layer. I use tempera paint for this because it easily washes off. I do about a 50-50 mixture of water and tempera paint and I put it in a bowl and then when I'm ready to use it, I just shake it up. And all I do is pour it right onto the glass and I just move the glass around until it's completely covered. I stopped using brushes or rollers because it just left lines and it left it with an inconsistent burn. And then you just let it dry. And it was a nice sunny day outside and it dried in about um, 30 minutes. If you find paint on the other side, you want to definitely make sure it's nice and clean. Otherwise, it will engrave on both sides. Then we're going to place the cutting board paint side up, which is upside down, and we're going to reverse the image. Now, to help center this logo in the cutting board, I am going to actually outline the cutting board itself with a hidden layer. And that way I could just use both of them and just hit center. And it will center everything within my cutting board. It makes it a lot easier to center any logos or any wording that you want. And then I'm going to adjust the power. So I did 75 on the power, 200 on speed, and line density at 200. And that's for the fill and grave. And this does have lines as well, so it's going to do that pass as well. Now you definitely want to make sure that your laser is on a nice solid work surface that doesn't shake a lot because <laughs> this laser can make everything shake because it has a pretty darn heavy module inside of it. And you can see that wherever that tempera paint, the the etching is nice and frosted. So let's go ahead and just wash it off with some warm water. I like having the etching on the back because then you actually don't really feel it. And if it's using a cutting board, you're not um, digging into any of the etching. And you can see right there on the top, because uh, my laser isn't on a real nice solid surface, that it kind of messed up a little bit because it was shaking so much. So again, make sure your laser is on a nice solid surface to help prevent that from happening to you. And that brings us to today's video sponsor. Are you looking for a PCB manufacturer? Are you looking for rigid, flexible PCBs? Are you looking for them to assemble them for you? Well, they can. And they also offer other services such as 3D printing, injected molding, and CNC. Heck, they even have a community section where you could buy a project and assemble it on your own. If you're looking for any of these services, please reach out to PCB Way. I need to find a cup and sorry State Farm, yours was the only one available. And I hate to tell you, this laser will not, not engrave stainless. It doesn't work that way, homie. You could only mark metals with a 455 nanopeanut laser. That's actually why Omtech says laser marking spray. And you're going to want to clean your surface with some alcohol and make sure you remove any contaminants. Then you're going to shake your laser marking spray and we are going to um, test it out real quick on the side and just put a light coat on it. You don't need to have a real thick coat. One or two passes is good enough. Try to avoid any runs as well. Sure, you could get a nice mark on stainless steel, but you have to go slow and high power, which could actually um, warp the metal. So I suggest using an interface layer. Now, WeCreate has a standard spot for your rotary. You just have to remove these two screws that are actually in the machine already, and you'll see that they have Loctite on it. You're gonna remove the grate on the bottom, both pieces, because this will give you additional clearance. And then you will take your uh, rotary, it has a, a guide pin in there, and you're gonna insert the two screws, one on each side. And then you're going to plug in your cable in the back and make sure that the machine is off when you do this. And I tighten my State Farm mug into the chuck nice and carefully not to touch it because it's kind of chalky. And I change laser flat to laser cylindrical on the top in the upper right hand corner. 
What this will do is flip the image in the proper orientation. It makes it a lot easier to apply your, your design onto the mug. Now you're going to want to hit the refresh button. And what this is going to do is going to lock down your work area. So after it's done refreshing and autofocusing, you're going to see a, a non-working area. And this is where it won't engrave. Now, before you place the mug in there, um, you want to make sure that you know the circumference or diameter of the mug. I know that it is a 280, and that is where you put it in. You want to click on the outside of anywhere in the work area, not on the logo, to enter these perimeters to enter that. Now, I'm just going to adjust my image a little bit here. And in the preview area in the lower right, you have a chart that you can go off of. Now, this will give you a power and you know speed rating and what to expect. And since this isn't power coded, I um, I'm not going to really go with um, anything super slow speed. So I'm going to do actually the power at 100, speed at 158, number of passes one, and line density of 100. And you'll see uh, since this isn't a JPEG, it's going to actually be bouncing around a lot. I think uh, doing a, like an image on here would be a lot more beneficial because it wouldn't be jumping around and it would actually go a lot faster. So you'll see that it's skipping some letters and then it does one part of it and then you know it's doing the outside and then it'll do the inside. So do an image. It'll be a lot faster if possible. All right, it is finished. So let's go ahead and remove it from the chuck here and you're going to take your chuck key and you're going to just go ahead and loosen it you just have to loosen it a little bit see how it just sagged down and now i'm going to just put my hand inside because it is like i said kind of a chalk so you definitely don't want to touch it all the time especially before you put it on but you can see how nice and dark the contrast is and again all you have to do for this is literally rinse it off with some hot water and all that interface layer will come right off and what we did was mark the stainless steel. We did not engrave it. Two totally different things. And the contrast is rather striking on here. Now it's kind of bright in my garage. And I will give you a different angle a little bit later on it. But yeah, that is so nice and clean. And that can of marking spray goes a long way. So, and here's what I was talking about. Look how nice and crisp this is. I think the logo might be a little bit too big, but hey, I guess you could see it from a lot longer distance. Well, State Farm, I'm sorry, but uh, this was the only one that was available. I thought I actually had some spares around the house. Now, what do I like about the WeCreate 40 Watt Vision Laser? It is fully enclosed, and if it is running and you open the lid, it will pause the job. It has ventilation, and it has that nice, powerful 40 Watt Laser module. And most importantly, this has a camera that moves along with the Z for different heights of material. A lot of other laser engravers have a stationary camera. So if you have taller materials, it gets closer to camera and you really can't use it for placement of your images. So you definitely want a camera that moves along with the Z. It just makes sense. And that way you could always use it. It has that built-in air assist that will actually only turn on if you're cutting or you're doing a line. And WeCreate has its own software that makes laser engraving very simple to use for a beginner. Now, I haven't tried it with Lightburn yet, but I heard that the camera isn't fully compatible yet. Now, where are some of the negatives? Now, I do like using a fume extractor unit, and I currently have one attached right now, and you'll see that smoke is leaking around the sides. Now, I would like to mention that this is not totally uncommon with an enclosed unit especially one that raises and lowers, but this wasn't a really demanding project here. It's only doing some lines and it's seeping everywhere. And I just don't know why it's doing this because typically when I hook up an extraction unit, this one that I've used for a long time, it keeps up with it. Now it does have a relatively small exhaust fan on the back. I'm wondering if that's what's interfering with the extraction unit itself. When I disconnected it from the extraction unit, it actually kept up very nicely. So I would suggest that you vent this out maybe a window or something. So that way it could keep up a lot better. And I mentioned this on the 20 watt. 
recreate. Just provide some thumb screws to make the, the rotary nice and easy to take in and out. I'm glad it has a nice placement, but still. And lastly, yes, this big module moves pretty darn fast and it can make your material bounce around. So make sure that your vision is on a nice solid work surface and maybe secure your workpiece inside. With all that being said, I still believe that this is one of the better laser engravers on the market. And if you're looking to purchase one, affiliate links are down below. It doesn't cost you anything additional, just helps support the channel. And once again, I really truly appreciate you tuning in to Tripods Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you the next time on Tripods Garage.